because it is a skill and it is a technique uh, which <clears throat> is more easily practiced uh, in company of fellow practitioners. So I think it helps both Catherine and myself to be with you to, to put in our practice. And we hope it works the other way. We're here to help one another in acquiring, cultivating, deepening a skill over the week. And every one of us who is interested, sincerely interested in acquiring a, a, what we think is an extremely valuable skill, every one of us will have no problem in discovering exactly what that skill is and making a good beginning with the help of our friends in cultivating uh, this very, very special skill. Now, what is that skill? And uh, this I always find so interesting to have to really say what I'm up to, you know, really start again. Douglas, let Douglas, please, Douglas, start again and discover what you're up to. I find this is so interesting and essential, really. Well, I think I put it to myself this way. Having happened, having occurred into the world, which is a very extraordinary thing, a very marvellous thing, being this most marvellous, gosh, what is it, this most marvellous thing? It really is an astounding thing that one has turned out to be. It's most, most marvellous. I mean, no doubt it's difficult, life is difficult, but it's most extraordinary. And of course, each of us knows at centre what it's like. And that's what I mean by being first person singular present tense. See, there are two views of you and two views of me. One is uh, what we call appearance, which is a view from a distance, how one strikes other people, the impression you make on other people, what you look like to them. And you have a good idea of that, some idea of that, because you see it in the mirror. Well, we call that the second stroke third person. It's your impression of me and my impression of you when we are X meters apart surveying one another. That's one aspect of ourselves. But it's a view from there, it's a view from there. It's what we look like, it's not what we're looking out of. It's a distant impression. So I have a distant impression of what Douglas is like. I see him in a mirror, <coughs> and perhaps I might say, well now, I wonder what I look like to, to Jacques there, or I speculate about what Brigitte is making of old Douglas here, you know. There's old Douglas in the mirror. Well, that's very important, come on. That's very important <laughs> stuff. Our third personhood is very precious, very special and very important. But it's uh, 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 only half the story, if that, because there's another aspect of which is what one is at centre, at no distance, at zero distance from oneself. Not what, not what one looks like, but what one is looking out of. We're so good at looking at things, including ourselves in the mirror, especially ourselves in the mirror. But what are we looking out of? First person. And you know, we is crazy. When we join the human club, we allow everybody out there to tell us what it's like right here. And that's silly. Don't you let Douglas tell you who you are. Or even Catherine. You mustn't let us tell you who you are. Why? Because we're too far away. Only you have that necessary first person inside information. Only you. And on this subject, which is the subject, the capital S, you are the sole and final authority. And when we joined the human club, which we all had to do, and it was very necessary to do as we grew up, we obeyed one crazy, crazy club rule, 
which is to say the other members of the club out there can tell me what I am here. The club is a process of intimidation. Intimidation. And the proposition, the crazy proposition of this club, which is a very necessary club, but the crazy proposition is, I am what I look like. I'm here roughly what you, you know, what, that kind of stuff. I'm like that here. I look in the mirror to see what others are getting, and that's more or less what old Douglas amounts to. Well, don't believe me, but I, I promise you, I promise you in my own experience, that not only am I not what I look like, thank God, what I look like is your problem, and you, you're welcome to that. <laughs> but not only am I not like that, I am in all important respects the opposite of that. So I think that membership of the human club, necessary though it is, Membership involves this crazy idea that I'm the opposite of what I really am. Now, don't believe this. We're going to test this. You're going to decide whether what I'm saying now is true or false. But it's certainly my experience that the great problems of my life, the big problems of my life, all of them have come from this great mistake which comes from superimposing my third personhood on my first personhood, my appearance upon my reality. And, and really, it's extraordinary that one's lives, our lives work at all, isn't it, in view of this nonsense? Well, well, why do they work at all? They work because we can't do it. It's a nonsense. And each of us is really living all the time from this immensity, this first personhood. So the purpose of this week together, as I understand it, is not to change our, change our basic way of life, not to reform ourselves, but to wake up to the way we already are. Because each of us is living all the time from this truth of first personhood, what is like right here at zero inches from myself. So that's what I uh, understand and feel and, and hope and know that this week is going to be about. And this is so precise. You know, spirituality suffers from terrible cloudiness and verbosity and abstract abstract thinking and so on. And uh, this week is spent in the most incredibly practical, concrete, physical experiments. And it consists really, um, in the main, I would say, in the main it consists of a series of physical journeys. Physical journeys. From a real location, over a real distance to a more real destination by means of specific vehicles. And these are real journeys from our third personhood, from what we look like to what we are. And for the, these journeys, we have a fleet of vehicles, maybe 20 vehicles. Some are, are better than others. This evening, this afternoon, we have a Rolls Royce. <laughs> we also have bicycles all sorts of other vehicles for bring, bringing us back from being eccentric to being concentric, from what we look like to what we are. I call it the one meter spiritual path. I'm not so sure about the spiritual. Well, spiritual, physical, yes. It's a real journey to a real place. So Catherine and I are really kind of travel agents, aren't we, travel agents? Yes. <laughs> and so the experiments, these experiments, these journeys, these vehicles are really the nitty-gritty of the week. Coming back from our appearance to our reality, which we never left really. When I say training and uh, the exercise and cultivation of a skill, I mean that skill in making this journey back back from the far country, 
where I think we find ourselves eventually starved and in despair, in real, real trouble. And we come back to the, our home. We come home to a place we never left. And I think it's so nice, so nice, so beautiful, that this is so physical, it's so real. I mean, it's so concrete, isn't it? It's something we can actually do physically. I think true physical and true spiritual come together, absolutely. And why are we practicing this? Not just to entertain ourselves and have a nice time and love one another, which I hope we shall do, <laughs> but that we shall go out into life and live from the place we are living from, which is here, instead of from there. This is to become real and authentic, centered, who we really, really are instead of who we were told we were. And it's my experience and the experience of many friends here that who we really are, what we really are, and who we really are is in absolutely the cat's whiskers. I mean, it's absolutely what, what we need. It is just so extraordinarily blessed. Marvelous. Could not be more marvelous. And when we exchange what we are for what we look like, we are doing ourselves a terrible mischief. But as I say, don't believe us. The experiments will, will establish you in your own authority. practice of first personhood. And uh, what is the relationship of this week with the traditional ways home? Well, I think it's the very same journey, but the vehicles are Western, up-to-date, I think enormously effective, but you shall be the judge. So that's our business, as I see it. You say, I'm here to practice this with you, with your help to practice it. Practice is a heavy word. Enjoy it, I would say, enjoy it. This is not practice for some future gain. It's practice for present enjoyment. Getting back to who we are is the easiest and simplest things in, thing in the world. Practicing it is the, is, the, is the harder part, and we're going to do both. <clears throat> Thank you. Yes.